Good morning. This morning, I'm going to talk about present suffering and our future glory with God. The reading is going to come out of Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 30. I'm going to read the New King James Version this morning. Before we get into this, start out by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord to shine to our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in scripture. Help us apply what we learn that you're having conquered sinful desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You Christ, your God, you are light, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages, Amen. Lord, the shepherd. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the grace of faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. All right, here we go. So Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 30. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this says, from suffering to glory. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly. But because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what it sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For 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 we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's look at it. All right, so Romans chapter 8, verses 18 and 30. It's a powerful passage, right? That dwells into the tension between present suffering and what? Future glory. So suffering and glory. Romans chapter 18. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 25, right? So 18 through 25. From suffering to glory. And it says, for I consider that these things of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be, real, be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who, who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with bird things together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Beautiful. So in verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with 
with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So Paul is acknowledging present suffering, but he's also improvising that they are incomparable to the glory that will be revealed. The glory of God. It's beautiful. In verses 19 through 22, creation groans, right? So creation groans. Groans in in anticipation of redemption, paralleling the believer's longing for the final restoration. In verse 23, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Believers, too, groan as they wait the redemption of their bodies, eagerly anticipating the fullness of salvation. In verse 24, for we are saved in this hope, but hope that is, that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Hope involves the patient waiting for what is not yet seen. I say that again. Hope involves the patient waiting for what is not yet seen. Beautiful. Verses 26 and 27, right? The role of the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit intercedes for believers, helping in their weakness and aligning their prayers with God's will. Verses 28 and 30, God's sovereign plan. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So all things work together for good. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. This doesn't mean... All situations are good, but God orchestrates them for the ultimate good. Right? In verses 29 to 29 30, God's foreknowledge, predestin predestination. So God's foreknowledge, predestination, calling, justification, and glorification are highlighted, improvising his sovereign plan and the salvation process. Biblical parallel. So I found a biblical parallel. Consider the story of Joseph in Genesis. Right? including betrayal and a punishment, imprisonment, ultimately led to God's greater purpose for saving his family and many others. This parallel lies in the idea that God can use even tricky circumstances for a higher redemptive plan. And that is found in Genesis chapters 30, 37 through 50. The theological theme of suffering and God's glory, the, over, the overarching theme, is that present, personal, or cosmic suffering is part of a larger narrative where God's glory will be revealed. Suffering is not meaningless, but woven into God's redemptive plan, ultimately displaying his glory through believers' final restoration and glorification. <laughs> Lastly, this, this passage encouraged believers to endure hardships with hope, knowing that God works through all things for their ultimate good and his glory. The Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And that's where we'll end this morning. Thank you all again for following. Quick reading. And close out with a blessing. Depending on how I'm feeling, we may or may not get back to our, our Bible this evening, but we'll see. I'm still, I'm still in a lot of pain, but I wanted to get this reading this morning out to you all. Thank you all again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages, the Lord's our shepherd. All right, we depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Come in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. I love you all so much. Good morning. Have a blessed day. Yeah. Maybe we'll get to our Bible today. We'll see. I guess I'm a lot of pain, but thank you all again for following. I love you all so much.